Me, hi, Akon, I realize I don't have the technological background to provide you with the wording you need to channel these answers, but can we give it a try anyway? Akon, I am happy to help, of course. Me, people have been seeing different rays coming from our sun, Saul, and it looks to be whiter than it used to be. Before it was yellow and now it looks more radiant, whiter. Can you explain why this is? Akon, my dear, yes. It is because their vibration has risen and they can see the sun at a higher vibration. Yes, your sun is shining, it is present, throughout many dimensions and with the ascension of your earth and the ascension of those upon her, their physical eyes can now see what has been there all along. The stars shine through all the physical dimensions, such as your light bodies are present in all the dimensions, they simply appear different to those in each dimension depending on the frequency of that dimension. Me, my other question arose from something I came across. It said that the sun determines the type of life that will live on the planets around it. Earth is biodiverse because of our sun. Why is this? Akon, why is your sun the type of sun that can create biodiversity on your planet? Me. And do the other planets or did the other planets have this biodiversity as well? Akon, good questions. I will find the simplest explanations for those who have little scientific knowledge. Me, like me. Akon, there are many factors for biodiversity. The sun must have a strength, measured in lux, that permits a diverse range of growth. Your sun does, for the third dimension. This will change in the fourth and fifth dimensions as the sun on these levels will support different types of life. Me, like crystalline life in the fifth. Akon, there is a lesser need for animal life on a fifth dimensional planet, yet more plant life. Animals are of a lower phylum and therefore are relegated to primarily lower dimensions. Plant life has a greater range, from lower to higher dimensions. So the plant life on 5D Earth will reflect that. Yes, you know when you do indoor planting, that you need a light bulb of a certain frequency in order to grow these plants. If you try to grow plants outside of that frequency, they will not thrive. Tropical plants will need a higher frequency as the sun is more dominant around your equator than in the upper and lower regions of your planet. Me, Akon, this is bringing up more questions. I'm going to get off track. Akon, smiling, can I then assume? That humans, being of higher frequency, should be living around the equator of Earth? Akon, yes. Originally they were. However as your Earth underwent changes, humans moved away from paradise, do you not call it that? Paradise. And moved to colder regions. There is not enough sunlight throughout the year to feed the plant life to sustain your physical bodies, however through human ingenuity, they learned to live in the colder regions. Ideally, you would be living in regions that could feed you throughout the entire year and with this, I also mean feeding you with light, as you realize that light and fresh ocean air, yes, the oceans filter and dispense clean oxygen, to the extent you allow them to, your oceans are now highly polluted so the air is as well, so yes, the regions around the equator are the ideal for human life. You can also walk barefoot, which keeps you grounded. Me, yeah. Beats boots for snow. Akon, I see you are barefoot now. Me, always. Will Earth ever return to being tropical everywhere, in all regions? Akon, 5D Earth will be such. You can dispense with your snow boots there. You can wear summer clothing all year long. Me, and this is because of the sun? Akon, yes, and that Nova Gaia will be a UNI polar system and its wobble will be righted me, wobble. I'm getting a feeling of. Oh, oh. Who created the wobble? Akon, need I say? Your planet reacts to you. If you are dysfunctional, then so is she. If you do not live by universal law, and live in a disorderly fashion, then your earth is affected. You see yourself, that your cat responds to your mind. After he bit your foot while you were sleeping, yes, this was sexual. Me, I know. Gross. Akon, he now sleeps upon his own bed as per your wishes. You have your space back and need not worry about having your feet bitten while you are asleep. He also responds to your thoughts of him, and he eats a lot because you are always thinking of eating. 
he simply lives according to your mind. He is a reflection of your thinking. So is Gaia. Me, speaking of food. Akon, you do not eat when you realize you are hungry. You started this channeling hungry and now you find you will snack to ward off hunger when you really need a good nutritious meal instead. You are eating in a dysfunctional manner. All of these things, your thinking, impacts the planet you live on. Your planet reflects the minds upon it. Me, scary, isn't it? A con, life is a mirror. Your planet, your cat, mirrors your mind. You, as a powerful light worker, have particularly strong energy, so you are influential. Your cat is showing you that. Me, could I influence his fleas, maybe? A con, you leave him to take care of himself. You understand at least, that his body is a natural environment, it is its own ecosystem, and you let him take care of his own ecosystem. You do not bathe him for the same reason. Me, yes, he's pretty dirty. Maybe he'll be a tortoise hair before long, instead of an orange tabby. A con, interesting concept, using dirt to change your cat to another breed of cat. He can eradicate his own dirt. Me, that's another reason I didn't want him on my bed. He was changing that ecosystem to requiring more washing of blankets. A con, you are allowing him his own domain. I am sure he appreciates this. If you all would do the same with Gaia, she would be enormously happy. Yes, reducing your footprint is a start. Me, okay, back to biodiversity. Do the other planets in this solar system have or had, the same biodiverse qualities as Earth? A con, no. Your Earth is in an optimal range. There are ranges. Mercury, which is closest to the Sun, would be on the warm side. It would have an atmosphere and atmospheric protection, to block out the sun's rays to the degree that it would allow for life on that planet. Me, could you engineer something? A con, we can, then allow the denizens of that planet to monitor it themselves. We find it is more difficult to make planets closer to the sun livable than it is for planets further away to be livable. In either case, human intervention is necessary. For your Earth. It was optimal until the atmosphere began to change due to human irresponsibility. So there is the sweet spot, I believe is your current vernacular. Me, oh. You get points for sweet spot but lose them with vernacular, meaning slang, of course. A con, I see. That will be duly noted. He doesn't care, actually. He thinks it's funny. Me, but in any case, you could take virtually any planet and make it livable. A con, there are many. The other question is, livable for whom? Me, oh yeah. So are you telling me, through what I see in my mind, that some planets are only going to be suitable for low vibrationals, and that's it? A con, with less sunlight there will be fewer plants, with fewer plants, there are fewer higher dimensional beings, so yes. Me, so if I go out to Pluto, I might see some really ghoulish beings. A con, you need only look on your own planet, you need not go so far, my dear. It is part of Earth's biodiversity. Me. So is Mercury inhabited at our vibrational level? A con, yes. Me, who lives there? A con, humans and other gaseous type beings. Me, cool. So is it tropical and what's the water like? A con, there is not as much water. It is primarily a landlocked type of world. There is much human climate control and intervention. Me, at lower 4D? A con, yes. Me, so we can go there? A con, do you wish to get so close to the sun? Me, you do. A con, we have the technology to keep ourselves safe from its negative impact. You do not. You still believe the sun will kill you. We know it as a stargate. Me. A con, your Ivo uses it as well when he goes back to Elturin. Me, he's taken me with him then in the astral because I know I've gone. A con, yes. You have been to see us as well, on Meeton. Me, so there are humans on Mercury? A con, yes. Not as populated as Earth but then it is not going through an ascension process. Me, I'd heard the whole solar system is ascending. A con, 
at their own levels. There are still fourth dimensional Mercurians, and the higher dimensional Mercurians are prompting them to evolve. Does this sound familiar? Me, yes. A con, this is what the light workers will be doing on Earth. You have intervened in the natural process of ascension, where higher dimensionals help the lower dimensionals of their planet, because there are no higher dimensionals on planet Earth, so you are beginning the process for all who follow you. Me, so what about Mars? A con, Mars does have life upon it. It also has life from your planet upon it. Unbeknownst to many, yes. Your nefarious military-industrial complex has put life on many planets in your solar system at third and fourth dimensional levels. They could not upon the fifth dimension because these planets were already occupied, such as Venus is occupied by the Venusians in 5 and 6D. This is where Ashtrashran lives, 5D Venus. Yes, he calls that his home for now, for his physicality. Me, so did Mars have the same biodiversity as Earth? It's pretty close by. A con, not as diverse but you know that ferns come from Mars so there was some trading between your planets when Mars had a human colony upon it, before its atmosphere was destroyed. Me, and now there's an atmosphere on Mars again? A con, somewhat. Again, generated by technology. Not as rich in oxygen as your planet. Earth is ideal for lower dimensional human life, arguably. When you create artificial environments, you can live practically on any planet you wish, however sometimes when planets are forming you have major disturbances in weather, etc. Yes, the lower dimensional beings would love to live in your solar system with a human host as a slave as they are parasitic beings, however the rest of us humans in the galaxy do not want them. You understand why we are so protective of our planets and why we value our lives so much and wish this menace to leave our universe. Me, I do. I don't think anyone on Earth with their eyes and ears open, would argue with what you're doing. All have the right to life, even evil beings, but find a place to live amongst your own. They're invading this galaxy. A con, they invade because they are parasites. That is their nature which is contrary to that of the human being, we are not parasitic beings and will not be host to them any longer. They, on the other hand, cannot live without us. Yes, and creating havoc, disturbing the balance and in the same vein, destroying the sanctity of life, hindering the ascension process. Me, not helping the ascension process? A con, as Ashtra had said, the amount of negativity they create does not help any process. They only create death from it as that is their intention. Me, as energetic parasites, why destroy the hosts that you are dependent on? A con, they think nothing of destroying your planet either. They have done all of the damage on it and they also use CERN technology to threaten the universe. My dear, do not assume that they are behaving reasonably, as they are not. Reason is not part of their process. They do not use reason. It would be reasonable to understand that they cannot kill off the host they depend on and continue to live. They have your people thinking the same way as you continue to destroy the world you live on. This is not reasonable and neither is this pestilence. Reason is beyond them. They do not understand that without a host, they will die. Perhaps they are so arrogant they believe they will simply find new hosts. They will not. We will not allow it. Their vibration is one of not revering life and with this comes the attitude that they care not if they destroy the host or the planet that their hosts live upon. Hence you have the dilemma of 4D Earth, circuit 2018. Me, wow. Thank you for that conversation, Akon. I learned a lot. Even without science 101. Akon, you are most welcome. I understand you are busy with ascension but perhaps we will speak more frequently me, I'll try, that's all I can promise. A con, again, I bid you adieu. Me, 20.